our call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to episode 12 of First Online. It's me, Pastor Woods, and I promise you we've got a great service put together for you, a wonderful experience. And so I'm going to get out the way and just say welcome real quick. I love you. I hope everybody's safe and excited this morning. Uh, we're going to jump to the praise team, get a selection, and see if we can just jump right in. So uh, glad you're here. Get comfortable, and let's enjoy this time together. verses 1 through 5, and I will be reading from the New International Version, and it reads, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. 
His faithfulness continues through all generations. And the word of God for the people of God. All right, I told you we had some good music lined up for you. So let's take a moment now and bow our heads and get a word of prayer. In. Dear eternal and gracious master, we thank you God for this opportunity to come to pray, just to spend a moment with you today, God. Uh, we thank you for providing those necessities, food and water and roof over our head and so many things that you give us that oftentimes we take for granted, Lord. We say thank you for every blessing, big and small today, Lord, as we continue prayer for the George Floyd family, we continue prayer for so many other families that have been impacted by the violence, the profiling, and the things we see in the news. And Lord, we stand with everybody who's trying to get our country on the right path, God. We need your help, Lord, in the streets and with people's minds and hearts right now, God, as we try to wrestle with what a true uh, place where people are equal, what that truly looks like, God. Uh, we have a lot of loud voices and not listening, we have a lot of just people all over the place with opinions and so much to discern, Lord. But we continue to look to you, God, to lead us and guide us through this time. We look to you, God, and trust in you, God, to carry us through uh, these unprecedented times. And we know, Lord, that even though things look rocky on the outside, God, you are a steady rock in our shield on the inside. So thank you, Lord, for being our God. Thank you, God, for being there for us and continuing to protect and lead and guide us. We continue to look to you and give you all the praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so here's the question. Who wants to hear another selection from the praise team? I'll wait. That wasn't good enough. I said, who wants to hear another selection from the praise team? There we go, there we go. All right, let's jump to the praise team. And when we get right back, we'll get a word titled, I'm not going back and forth with you. That's the title, I'm not going back and forth with you. So come back for that after this selection for the praise team. Let's go. Thank you, Praise Team, as always, doing an excellent job. 
as we get ready to get in this word just want to quickly remind everybody to stay safe and stay distant uh, we're meeting regularly preparing sanitization for the for the sanctuary and a lot of things coming up so we're not quite there yet uh, but we are positioning ourselves to be able to make uh, the right decisions at the right times things are changing week to week you guys I miss you I love you I want every hug and every kiss that I've missed for the last 12 weeks and then some so hold those and uh, I promise as a family we're gonna be back in the house again real soon but in the meantime I think there's a good word from the Lord today so and it's found in the sec uh, Paul's letter to Timothy 2nd Timothy 2nd Timothy chapter 2 verse 23 it says don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels and the Lord's servant must not quarrel instead he must be kind to everyone able to teach not resentful I'm gonna put a tag on that text and uh, borrow a title from a song I don't know if that's actually the title of the song but that's the refrain uh, called I'm not gonna go back and forth with you let us pray dear Heavenly Father let the words of my mouth meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight in Jesus name Amen so we're all at home, we're all on quarantine, we're uh, all looking at COVID-19 on the news and we're watching uh, Black Lives Matter and we're watching the protests and we're watching the president and watching all this stuff and I don't know about you but I've learned a lot over the last three weeks. Uh, I actually put another piece of software in my toolkit, if you will. Uh, I learned another piece of software and learned it quite well. So uh, spent some time at home working on video production software. Yeah, go figure. Um, video production software. And so, you know, I've been spending this time learning things. I've also learned that, you know, there's nothing like home cooking. You know, I think I kind of got moving around so much. I was spoiled on eating out. And now I'm eating at home more and cooking more and it's a little healthier. And I'm thanking God for that. Uh, but there's a lot of things that I'm kind of learning, not just through the quarantine, but about myself and just being observant. Uh, the other day, I, I had somebody uh, point out something interesting, and I didn't notice until they pointed it out. But it was another thing that apparently I'm learning and didn't know I was learning. Uh, it was a friend of mine, and we've been friends for years. And he friended me on Facebook recently. And then he, we got on the phone, and he said, yeah. He said, I went through your Facebook. He said, I really like the stuff you're posting. He said, but I noticed that you get a lot of crazy responses to the stuff that you post. And I just kind of shook my head you know, on the phone. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. And then he said, but I also noticed that you don't really like engage a lot of them. You just kind of let them go. And I paused there for a minute. Because anybody who knows me knows that I've, I've, I've always tended to be a little argumentative and you're not supposed to laugh right there. Um, you know, I'm a little bit competitive and, and whatnot. So, you know, over the years, I've tried to tone that down. I've tried to realize that, you know, there's a place and a time for that. And so even on social media, you know, I used to be a real firecracker on social media. And when he pointed it out, I kind of thought about it and was like, yeah, that is kind of where I've been for about the last month. You see, with all this going on and, and with so much information and misinformation and conflicting information, uh, people are just kind of argumentative right now. Uh, you know, you throw up any one thing on social media or Facebook and all of a sudden, uh, I promise you, you're going to get a wide array of responses and chuckles and laughs and thumbs up. I mean, and even not just on social media, you know, if you say anything regarding Trump, Republican, Democrat, or anything in, the, in public, you'll have people next to you arguing with you. Uh, we've seen the videos of people in grocery stores telling immigrants to go back I mean people just seem to be kind of in this 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 mode of everybody dig in and stand your ground and we're gonna all fight each other and argue with each other and everybody is right none of us are wrong and I'm entitled to my opinion and you know on and on and on and on and you know I, I, I debated in high school I mean I could you know we could go there but what is that really doing what does it really prove when we push our points and push our points and argue and more importantly how does that reflect on on the image of a Christian that is being portrayed to the world because we're what they look at to determine what's what's the Christian and so Paul writes this little piece of piece of moment to, to Timothy and, and I love what he says he says don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments why because they produce bad fruit they produce quarrels and I looked up these words here trying to get a little bit of the Greek in there and quarrels is really more like war uh, they produce an actual war and I think you know when we talk about uh, the difference between being right and doing right that sometimes we can get so caught up in being right that we wreck everything trying to be right 
as opposed to pausing and listening and sometimes doing what's right. I think I might have found somebody with that one. And so what he says, he says, is when you cross a certain line in an argument, and I think we all recognize that line. You know that line where it goes from a constructive conversation to uh, a kind of a fruitless, petty kind of rhetorical dance, if you will. You know, when you cross that line, he says, there's nothing on the other side but anger. Somebody getting mad, somebody upset, somebody getting offended, and that's not fruitful to the kingdom. And then if you read what he continues to say, he says, here it is, verse 24, and the Lord's servant must not quarrel. So he's reminding him, he says, because when you do this, you're doing this as the Lord's servant. And so because you're doing this as the Lord's servant, he's saying, you have to be mindful. Let me tell y'all something, okay? I love God, I really do. And I know God has forgiven me way more than I deserve. And I thank him for his grace. And I thank him for the blessings he continues to bestow upon me. But there are some times where people will just push your button. And they don't just push one button, they push the combination of buttons. They will get you right down to your last nerve. I put it up on Facebook one day, I said, if I could have one day where I could just give the words I really want to give. And some people were like, go ahead, pastor, go ahead, pastor. You, you know, say how you feel, say how you feel. And other people were like, nah, take the high ground, you know, chill out, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, but all that to say, we all get to that place where we just get so upset and so frustrated because you're looking at somebody saying, how do you believe in that? Or how do you, I'll leave that alone. How do you vote a certain way? Um, you know, you just get so frustrated and like, are you blind? Do you not see? And, and you get to a point where you've crossed the line beyond constructive critique, constructive conversation and constructive criticism. And you've moved to a place of petty and argument and whatnot. And so what he tells him is he says, we can't do that because we're God's servants. And if you continue to read the rest of the chapter, he talks about the fact that we have to be able to engage people in a way that they can receive what it is that we're sharing with them. And the way they receive it is not through bickering and arguing and quarreling. Now, I want you to see a story real quick in Genesis chapter 13. And I want you to see this story because I think it's a good example of Abraham and Lot. Starting at verse 1, it says, So Abram went from Egypt to Negev with his wife, and everything he had, and Lot went with him. Abram had become very wealthy in livestock and in silver and gold. Verse 5. Now Lot was moving about with Abraham, and he also had flocks and herds and tents. But the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great they were not able to stay together. 7. And quarreling, remember that word? Quarreling arose between Abram's herdsmen and the herdsmen of Lot. The Canaanites and Perizzites were also living in the land at the time. So Abram said to Lot, gotta love Abram, Let's not have quarreling between you and me or between your herdsmen and mine, for we are brothers. It is not the whole is not the whole land before us. Let's part company. If you go left, I'll go right. And if you go right, I'll go left. And Abram gives us a wonderful example of de-escalation, conflict resolution. He says, look, I don't want to argue with you. This quarreling is getting us nowhere. So this is what we'll do. We'll separate. And understand that it's for the better good of both of us. And I even let you choose which piece of land you want first or which direction you want to go. And then I'll go the opposite direction. But the point that he gives us, if I can go back to the beginning, is that one, our quarrels don't produce fruit. Two, our quarrels are not good for our faith. But three, our quarrels are not good for our family. One, they're not good because they don't produce good fruit. They just produce war. Two, they're not good for the faith because we are representatives of God, as he told Timothy. But I wanted you to get this third point here. And that is, he says, right here, let me read it one more time. Verse 8. Let's not have quarreling between you and me, or between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are brothers. Sometimes we act like when we get in an argument, we're talking to somebody who's our enemy. And we want to win. Beat them down. But we got to remember that just because somebody else sees the protest or Black Lives Matter different than the way you see it, they're still dealing with their struggle like you and they're your brother. That's your brother, your brother, your sister, your sister, your sister. And so we have to understand that, you know, I mean, I have a sister and I can tell y'all, we've got some knockdown drag outs in, in our history, you know? But at the end of the day, I know she ride or die for me. I know I ride or die for her, that's my sister. And there's times, like I said, we've, we've had some big arguments over her and big arguments over me and blah, 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 blah. And we were kids. I got scratches where we pushed each other in the tables. We had some knockdown drag outs. But I can tell you, 
I have no greater fan than my sister, and she knows she has no greater fan than me. Because we feel as though our brother-sister bond always outweighs any difference that we might have. And so my brothers and sisters, as we go out into this uh, cantankerous climate, climate, how about that, a cantankerous climate, as we go into this cantankerous climate and everybody's poisoning their opinions and everybody's got an opinion about the police and defunding the police and Democrat, Republican and Trump this and this. this. I mean, there's so much going on that everybody's ready to stand their ground and say how they feel. And Facebook has given a platform where you used to sit at home and tell the few people around you. Now you can just punch some buttons. And you could tell the whole world. So people are more apt to even voice their opinion and jump out. But we have to remember, we have to remember that in all of that, we have to represent Christ. And that in all of that, we're still talking to our brothers and sisters. And so don't let differences divide your family. I have Trump supporters in my family, and it's a tough conversation, but it's still my family. Don't let differences divide you at work and whatnot. And instead, find the common ground. Okay, we might differ here, but where can we come together over here? So that's my word for you today. Uh, it's, it's a lot of folk saying a whole lot of stuff. Everybody's, I, I said the other day, no university has given away more doctorates than Facebook <laughs> because everybody on Facebook is a super expert professional, including myself. So I'm just as guilty. Um, but all that to say, you know, let, let's just be mindful uh, of ourselves as we push forward with the faith and as we share God's word and God's love. Uh, to some people. Some people just aren't going to receive it, and that's okay uh, for now. But we're planting seeds, and we're not going to stop telling them about God's love uh, because eventually one of those seeds will take root and germinate and become a wonderful Christian spreading God's love just as we are. So I love you guys. I thank you. Um, if you have not accepted Christ in your life, I want you to know that you can go to our website, firstamychurch.org, and you can fill out a form, and I will get back to you personally, and we'll have a conversation uh, about your faith. I want you to know that... Um, Bible study and uh, Sunday school are available. If you go to the website that I just gave you, firstamuchurch.org, there are a couple buttons right at the top. Hit the Bible study one on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock. Hit Sunday schools on Sundays at 930, and it will take you right in uh, via Zoom. So we're excited uh, to be trying our best to serve and service you. And then lastly, don't forget that tomorrow is the deadline uh, for the members-only uh, event through the food pantry uh, that we're talked about. So if you're a member of the church and you want to participate in that event, uh, please, it's a special event that we put together. Uh, make sure that you get a hold, with, get a hold of Helen and uh, make sure you fill out the information and get that stuff taken care of. So I think that's it. Uh, we had some wonderful officer meetings. I'm glad to report that uh, we, in the words of my mama, uh, all my bills are paid, but I ain't got nothing left. Uh, so that being said, uh, we're drudging along well. Our cut in expenses has helped to counter the cut in income. Uh, but if we all keep doing our best, keep doing what we're doing, I think we'll be able to come out of this uh, unscathed on the back end. We might have some catching up to do, but uh, we are really managing. Hats off to Daryl and Claude uh, for helping manage in the finances during a crisis. It's always easy to pay your bills when you got everything, uh, but it's a challenge when you really have to move every nickel and dime. So thank them uh, for their diligence and their job. And uh, just want to let you guys know that we're hanging tight we're meeting we're cleaning we're preparing to order masks sanitizer we're getting us ready uh, because I believe it'll be a matter of time but at the same time I am willing to err on the side of caution because I love all of you just that much and I want to make sure that your safety and your health always remain the priority so that's it I love you I miss you I want to hug when I see everybody and uh, until next week no until Bible study or Sunday school uh, take care